ducted air source heat pumps are central systems that heat and cool using your existing ductwork and can potentially replace both your combustion furnace and air conditioner with one system. This enables homeowners to heat and cool their home using the same unit. Ductless heat pumps, also known as mini splits, are an air source heat pump system that consists of two units, an indoor air handler connected to a slim outdoor condenser through a small opening in the wall or ceiling behind it. This means that mini splits don't require duct work, which saves homeowners space and gives them flexibility in placement. Mini splits are perfect for new homes, renovations, home additions, or adding air conditioning. They also control the temperature for an individual room, making heating and cooling more efficient while maintaining comfort. Considering installing an air source heat pump in your home? Here are some tips to keep in mind. Work with an HVAC contractor in your area to size the unit appropriately. Be sure to pick an air source heat pump system that is designed for cold climates. Finally, to find out about potential rebates and incentives, contact your local electric cooperative or public power district. Learn more today. When you occasionally receive notices about planned power outages, you may be wondering, why would my co-op intentionally shut off power? The equipment that delivers power to your home sometimes needs to be repaired or replaced. When this happens, we plan the power outage to keep crews and our community safe. We do our best to plan these outages when you'll be the least inconvenienced. Planned outages are actually beneficial. System upgrades are essential for optimal performance, and they increase power reliability. Repairs and upgrades are also critical to maintaining public safety. Planned outages allow us to keep the community informed of when and how long they'll be without service. Our goal is to ensure we're doing all we can to keep you safe and our system running smoothly. So, the next time you hear about a planned outage, know that it's just one of the many ways we're ensuring you receive safe, reliable power. Contact us to learn more. Why do we work all hours of the night? Head towards challenges instead of turning away. And work together to solve the toughest problems. So you can enjoy the little things. and all the big moments life has to offer. Tri-State and Highline Electric Association. Brighter, stronger, better together. There are many ways to heat and cool your home. Recent technology advancements in air source heat pumps now make them a strong alternative for space heating in colder regions, which may be a money-saving choice for you. 
Air source heat pumps move heat between the outside and inside of your home to keep your home cool in the summer and warm in the winter. They're quiet to operate and highly efficient because they move heat rather than convert it. There's no combustion of fossil fuels, which leads to safer operations, cleaner air, and a lower carbon footprint. If your home is currently heated with electric baseboard heat or propane, you could save money on your heating bill by switching to a heat pump. Air source heat pumps move heat between the outside and inside of your home to keep your home a comfortable temperature all year round. Air source heat pumps can use the ducts in your home or can be installed individually per room. Ducted air source heat pumps are central systems that heat and cool using your existing ductwork and can potentially replace both your combustion furnace and air conditioner with one system. This enables homeowners to heat and cool their home using the same unit. Ductless heat pumps, also known as mini splits, are an air source heat pump system that consists of two units, an indoor air handler connected to a slim outdoor condenser through a small opening in the wall or ceiling behind it. This means that mini splits don't require duct work which saves homeowners space and gives them flexibility in placement. Mini splits are perfect for new homes, renovations, home additions, or adding air conditioning. They also control the temperature for an individual room, making heating and cooling more efficient while maintaining comfort. Considering installing an air source heat pump in your home? Here are some tips to keep in mind. Work with an HVAC contractor in your area to size the unit appropriately. Be sure to pick an air source heat pump system that is designed for cold climates. Finally, to find out about potential rebates and incentives, contact your local electric cooperative or public power district. Learn more today. When you occasionally receive notices about planned power outages, you may be wondering, why would my co-op intentionally shut off power? The equipment that delivers power to your home sometimes needs to be repaired or replaced. When this happens, we plan the power outage to keep crews and our community safe. We do our best to plan these outages when you'll be the least inconvenienced. Planned outages are actually beneficial. System upgrades are essential for optimal performance, and they increase power reliability. Repairs and upgrades are also critical to maintaining public safety. Planned outages allow us to keep the community informed of when and how long they'll be without service. Our goal is to ensure we're doing all we can to keep you safe and our system running smoothly. So, the next time you hear about a planned outage, know that it's just one of the many ways we're ensuring you receive safe, reliable power. Contact us to learn more. Why do we work all hours of the night? Head towards challenges instead of turning away. And work together to solve the toughest problems. So you can enjoy the little things. and all the big moments life has to offer. 
Tri-State and Highline Electric Association. Brighter, stronger, better together. There are many ways to heat and cool your home. Recent technology advancements in air source heat pumps now make them a strong alternative for space heating in colder regions, which may be a money-saving choice for you. Air source heat pumps move heat between the outside and inside of your home to keep your home cool in the summer and warm in the winter. They're quiet to operate and highly efficient because they move heat rather than convert it. There's no combustion of fossil fuels, which leads to safer operations, cleaner air, and a lower carbon footprint. If your home is currently heated with electric baseboard heat or propane, you could save money on your heating bill by switching to a heat pump. Air source heat pumps move heat between the outside and inside of your home to keep your home a comfortable temperature all year round. Air source heat pumps can use the ducts in your home or can be installed individually per room. Ducted air source heat pumps are central systems that heat and cool using your existing ductwork and can potentially replace both your combustion furnace and air conditioner with one system. This enables homeowners to heat and cool their home using the same unit. Ductless heat pumps, also known as mini splits, are an air source heat pump system that consists of two units an indoor air handler connected to a slim outdoor condenser through a small opening in the wall or ceiling behind it. This means that mini splits don't require duct work, which saves homeowners space and gives them flexibility in placement. Mini splits are perfect for new homes, renovations, home additions, or adding air conditioning. They also control the temperature for an individual room, making heating and cooling more efficient while maintaining comfort. Considering installing an air source heat pump in your Good evening, everyone. Here are some tips to keep in mind. I like to call now this the 84th contract. meeting of Highline Electric Association's annual meeting to order. First order of business, Pastor Paul Bruner will give the invocation. In the beginning, the world was without form and dark. The Lord said, let there be light. Waited a minute. From out of the darkness, the lineman called back, five more minutes, boss. Inside joke. <clears throat> Gracious God, we give you thanks for the blessings of electricity, for the people who provide it, for this co-op guide our decisions that we might do what is best for community, guide our presence, that we might be kind to one another, walk with us in the light, and always, always we pray, keep us faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Amen. Next, let's pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. It has been determined that we have a quorum. There are 158 members. It uh, takes 100 to be qualified. With that, Mr. Luke would please stand up and do some introductions for us. We have a little housekeeping to do before we start introductions. Uh, 
due to an incident on TV the other night, if you're offended by a joke or a speaker, there's no slapping tonight. <laughs> Even though Reg Rudolph is here. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, to speed things up, if you'll hold your applause, I'll make any introductions here. We'll start with the Board of Directors. Our first and foremost, Leo Breckel represents District 1 and has been on the board 27 years. Leo represents Highline on the Tri-State Generation and Transmission Board. He represents Tri-State on the Bison Electric Power uh, Cooperative Board. And his wife, Debbie, is here tonight. I'm Jim Lewick. I represent Dis District 1 and been on the board 28 years. I'm the vice president of the board. I attend all you know, state funerals and ribbon cuttings, about my job. Uh, I represent Highline on the Midwest Electric Consumers Board and the Colorado L Rural Electric uh, Association Board, and I was a past president of that recently. My wife Peggy is with me tonight. <clears throat> We've got Pam Steeb. Where are you, Pamela? There you go. Represents District 1 and has been on the board for five years, and her husband Jerome's with her. And you can wave, Jerome. You don't have to stand up. <coughs> Got Brad Stromberger. Brad represents District 1 and has been on the board for five years. And his wife, Jonna, was with him. Oh, that was a week. That was a week. <laughs> Mike Bennett. Mike's president of the board and has been on the board for 21 years and represents District Number 2. And his wife, Susan, right here in front. Steve Osman. Steve represents District 2 and has been on the board 17 years. And his wife, Lori, is with him tonight. Aaron Sprague. Aaron represents District 2, has been on the board 11 years. And Aaron, uh, Aaron is also on the Republican River Water Conservation District Board. And he brings a lot to Highline Board just with being on that board. It's very, very enlightening to have you on there, bud. And his wife, Amber with him tonight. Ted Carter. Ted represents District 3 and has been on the board 15 years. He represents Highline on the Western Board, Western, yeah, United, no, Western United Board of Directors. There we go. Jeez. Wife, Patty. Dave Kennison is, uh, was, he resigned here the other day been on the board seven years and we certainly appreciate all the work that he added to the board. Merle Miller is absent tonight. He had a medical issue with his mother he had to take care of, so he won't be with us. Merlin Pryor, where's Merlin? Oh, hiding behind me. Merlin represents District 4 and has been on the board 18 years. Merlin is secretary of our board and he represents Highline on the Nebraska Rural Electric Association Board. His wife, Janet, couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, I've got other introductions of the people who have showed up. And uh, if you'll hold your applause, then we'll get through this thing. Jerry and Deb Bonica. Bonica. Oh, clear back there. There you go. Tom and Debbie Bennett. There you go. Nancy Burgess, there she is. Jean and Laura Bittner. Carol and Irene Bussell. Brian Gales. Uh, Randy, <coughs> excuse me, Randy Hale. <coughs> Terry Hoffmeister. Alrighty. Wayne and Dola Salyards. There you go. Kurt Graham with CREA. Andy Molt with YW Electric. There you go. Uh, Darcy Rodriguez with Holyoke Enterprise. Paul Bruner. Well, Reverend Paul Bruner gave the invocation. Evan Fust. I believe that's how I per better pronounce it that way. CHS. We also have tonight Reg Rudolph. Tri uh, 
Reg is a Tri-State Chief Energy Innovations Officer, and we'll be do, doing a little speaking here in a little bit. We also have Levi Williamson, uh, our counselor, go-to guy, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for about the last 15 years, I believe. So uh, I think that kind of takes care of it, Mr. President. Thank you, Jim. One small adjustment. Leo's wife, Debbie Breckel. Did we, did we? He got her? Okay, well, I forgot her one time. I wanted to make sure she got mentioned. <laughs> anyway, I wasn't paying very good attention, was I? Next, Merlin Pryor will read the notice of the 2022 annual meeting. The annual meeting of the members of Highline Electric Association will be held at the Phillips County Event Center in Holyoke, Colorado at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, March 29, 2022 to transact the following business. The reports of officers, directors, and committees. Election of directors. All other business which may come before the meeting or any adjournment thereof in connection with the election of directors scheduled for this meeting the following members have been nominated for directors by petition pursuant to the bylaws. For election of one director from district number one, who must reside in Lincoln, Logan, Washington, Weld, or Morgan County in Colorado, Leo Brickell is the incumbent director and nominee. For election of one director from district two, who must reside in Phillips or Yuma County in Colorado, Steve Olsman is the incumbent director and nominee. For election of one director from District 3 who must reside in Cedric County, Colorado or Dual County, Nebraska. Ted Carter is the incumbent director and the nominee. For election of one director from District number 4 who must reside in Chase, Perkins or Dundee County, Nebraska. Merle Miller is the incumbent director and nominee. The unapproved minutes of the 20 19 annual meeting are posted on our website at www.hea.coop. This notice is dated March 15, 2002, signed by Mike Bennett, President, Merlin Pryor, Secretary. At this time, I have the minutes from the 2018 meeting, which were to be read unless I have somebody that wishes to move that we submit the minutes as approved without the reading of them. I move to accept the minutes as printed. We have a motion. Do I hear a second? second? We have a motion and a second to waive the reading of the 2018 minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. The minutes stand approved as presented. Thank you. Good evening. Your board of directors are nominated and elected by you, the members. This year, because we do not have any contested election, we'll be able to handle this by a voice vote. For District 1, Leo Breckel, District 2, Steve Ostman, District 3, Ted Carter, and District 4, Merle Miller. Do I have a motion to elect, to cast a unanimous ballot for the directors as listed? I have a motion, do I have a second? I didn't hear it if, I, if there was one, do I have a second? Second, there's been a motion and a second to elect Leo Breckel, Steve Osman, Ted Carter, and Merle Miller. All those in favor, please say aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and they are elected. Thank you very much, Levi. At this time, I would like to um, ask uh, Dennis to come up 
and give his report. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Highline Electric Association's annual meeting. We're excited to once again be holding our annual meeting in person after a two-year hiatus due to COVID. I would like to ask um, all the Highline employees that are in attendance here tonight to please stand. If you will, please join me in thanking these dedicated men and women for their service to your cooperative. I'd like to thank Thaddeus Huser, Jesse Heath, and Jason Dollishall for their efforts and coordination of this annual meeting. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dean Jay Cafe from Julesburg for ca catering tonight's meal. And um, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but we were all a little stressed out, and I'm still a little stressed out, but I apologize to all of our members for the delay in the delivery of the annual meeting notices. Um, our bylaws dictate that the notices be mailed somewhere between one and two weeks prior to the meeting, and they were mailed on March 16th with several members not receiving the notice prior to tonight's meeting. So we're working on solutions to alleviate um, any delays of the mailings going forward. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions at the conclusion of my report and ask that if any of you who are joining us online that you submit your questions via the chat feature. To begin my, my manager's report, I would like to introduce you to Highline's Chief Financial Officer, Jim Jackson. Jim, would you come forward and present the financial report, please? Thank you, Dennis. Hello, I'm Jim Jackson, the Chief Financial Officer at Highline Electric Association. Thank you for attending this annual meeting and hope we provide you with information concerning your cooperative that you find meaningful and helpful. I'd like to begin by talking about kilowatt hour purchases and sales. The cooperative purchased 464,851,000 kilowatt hours in 2021. The vast majority, 454,021,000 kilowatt hours are from our power supplier, tri-state generation and transmission. 7,340,000 kilowatt hours was purchased through a project which electricity is generated through waste heat. 3,465,000 uh, kilowatt hours was generated from Highline Solar Generation Subsidiary Company. The total purchases were a decrease by 36 million kilowatt hours compared to 2020. Highline sales and purchases of electricity are highly dependent on weather, which compared to 2020 was milder. The cooperative sold to you, the members, 429,835,000 kilowatt hours, a, degree, a decrease of 40 million from 2020. Irrigation accounted for the largest share at 54.1% of the total kilowatt hours sold. Large commercial followed with 26.3%, residential at 14.5%, small commercial at 5.1%. Operating revenues for 2021 were $51,204,000, which is a decrease of $1.5 million compared to 2020. The decrease in revenue is mainly due to decrease in sales in the irrigation class due to weather being milder than 2020, along with our large commercial accounts using less energy. Take note of the red tips on two of these columns. The red amount symbolized deferred revenue that was used in these years to help meet financial goals. Our major lender, lender, Rural Utility Service, allows us to defer revenue in years, which we may have exceptionally strong margins and recognize those in subsequent, subsequent years. In years 2018 and 2019, we used $300,000 and $1 million, respectively, of deferred revenue. This slide shows operating margins before and after adjustments of, for deferred revenue. The operating margins in 2021 were $283,000. Our operating margins in 2020 were $1,699,000 before the deferment of $1.7 million of revenue and a negative $926 after deferment of revenue. In 2019, we had a negative $1,934,000 of operating margins 
before the recognition of $1 million of deferred revenue, making operating margins a negative $934,000 after the recognition. Deferring revenue and still having negative margins in 2019 and 2020, Highline was still able to meet all of our mortgage requirements. The most stringent of these requirements is O-tier, or operating times interest earned ratio. O-tier is a function of interest on long-term debt, operating margins, and cash received from Tri-State for capital credit retirements. Our mortgage requires that our O-tier, when averaged over two years, remains above a certain level, and we, we did that. Highline's operating margins are generated from the sale of electricity to the members. There are other non-operating margins that Highline receives from cooperatives in which we are members. Tri-State represents Highline's largest investment in these, in these cooperatives. Highline's total margins for 2021 was $1,587,000. This is comprised of Highline's generated operating margins of $283,000, $1,205,000 that were generated by our memberships in Tri-State, Western United, CoBank, and CFC, and $99,000 in interest and other non-operating income. Again, seeing the red tips of previous year's margins are due to the treatment of deferred revenue. Dennis will talk more about this in a few minutes that will give you a better understanding of deferred revenue. In 2021, the Board of Directors approved a capital credit retirement that included 100% of outstanding Highline capital credits from years 2005, 22% of 2006, 100% of the outstanding Tri-State capital credits from 1999, 100% of year 2000, and 13% from year 2001 for a total general retirement of $2,372,000. This slide shows our capital credit allocations and refunds since 1948. We have accrued capital credits over $111 million. We have refunded to a state $6.1 million. And again, our general refund for 2021 was $2,372,000. Refunds in prior years were $48 million, which including last year's retirement, totals $50.3 million returned to our members since 1948. Your member your member capital credit balance is $52.7 $52 million, of which $12.3 million is comprised of equity in Highline Electric, and $40.4 million represents equity in Tri-State and other cooperatives. We are currently on a 15-year retirement cycle for Highline capital credits, and as Tri-State retires capital credits to Highline, we, in return, return those amounts back to you, the membership. For year 2021, the cooperative ended with $2,506,000 in cash and investments, a decrease compared to 2020. This decrease was mainly due to a loan the cooperative received in year 2020. Our work plan determined the cooperative would need a loan to invest in system improvements, and with interest rates extremely low in 2020, a decision was made to enter into a loan and take advantage of low interest rates. Similarly, with years 2016 through 2018 with larger cash and investment balances, these were due to loans also being drawn while interest rate rates were favorable. Highline continues to maintain a strong balance sheet. We ended 2021 with an equity level of 46.7%. Equity measures the extent that you as members have financed plant in lieu of borrowed capital. Highline built three miles of new overhead line and one mile of underground line for a total of four miles of new line. The cooperative has 5,174 miles of line, 10,942 meters, which averages a little over two meters per mile of line. The national average for cooperatives is six, per, six meters per mile of line. So you can see we, we're, we're not up to the average. We are a rural system, a mature system, and a slow growing system. These factors require rebuilding or replacing distribution plant as it reaches the end of its useful life. In a fast growing system, much of the system plant is new. In a mature system like Highline, we budget for upgrades and rebuilds to maintain reliable service to the members. 
Highline's utility plant ended the year valued at $114.5 million, which is a $2.4 million increase over last year. In the last six years, we have spent $13.2 million to maintain or rebuild system plant to meet your needs. The cost to maintain our plant and make sure electricity is available, basically the cost of operating Highline was 20% of our total expenses in 2021. Depreciation and interest were another 10%, and our cost of wholesale power was 70% of our expenses last year. As you can see, what happens at the generation and transmission level with Tri-State has a very large impact on your energy bill. Another point this shows is we operate and keep electricity available to the members on a very slim portion of your energy bill. In closing, I'd like to say thank you for your time and thank you for being a member of Highline Electric Association. I hope the information provided shows your association is doing well and is financially stable. Please welcome back Dennis Herman. Thanks, Jim. I'm going to spend the next few minutes giving you an update on Highline and providing you with a few thoughts on the financial report from my perspective. Then I'll ask Red Rudolph to provide you with an update on Highline's wholesale power supplier, Tri-State Generation and Transmission. The last year has seen a number of changes at Highline. We now offer loans to our membership for the purpose of implementing energy efficiency improvements through the USDA's Rural Energy Savings Program. This program provides loan funds for a variety of energy efficiency upgrades, ranging from building envelope improvements to high efficiency appliances. Loan terms include interest rates as low as 3% and terms up to 10 years. Loan payments are added to your monthly electric bill. It is the goal of the program that the energy savings from the improvement more than offsets the amount of the loan payment. More information and loan applications are available on our website at www.hea.coop. Recent enhancements to Highline's beneficial electrification and efficiency rebate program include the addition of outdoor power equipment and electric vehicle charger installation rebates. The outdoor power equipment rebates are available for electric mowers, snow blowers, leaf blowers, chainsaws, pruners, trimmers, pressure washers, and bicycles. The EV charger rebates provide for up to 50% of the cost of a level two charger. And I'll notice you, you can go visit Sander over there in the corner of the room and he's got a lot of the electric outdoor equipment there as, as demos. Operationally, we have completed the three-year deployment of our automatic meter infrastructure, or AMI, project, with the last meter being installed in the last quarter of 2021. Highline utilizes over 170 miles of 69,000 volt transmission lines to deliver power to several substations throughout our service territory. We are in varying stages of planning for the replacement of a significant portion of this line, including 17 miles near Sterling that will be rebuilt beginning this fall, and approximately seven miles near Champion that we will be replaced in the next few years. Highline is not immune to the su supply chain issues and inflationary pressures that are impacting everyone. Lead times have increased dramatically for almost everything we buy, from vehicles to poles and transformers. We are working with our material suppliers in an attempt to work through these challenges with minimal operational disruptions. We installed a level two electric vehicle charger at our headquarters in Holyoke for public use. This installation was accomplished with no direct cost to our members through the use of grant funds available through the Colorado Energy Office. In addition, we are working together with Tri-State and the Colorado Energy Office to install a DC fast charging station along I-76 at the Julesburg Interchange this summer. Tri-State has purchased a handful of electric vehicles that are available to be checked out and utilized by their member cooperatives. These vehicles include a Chevy Bolt, Tesla Model 3, and Tesla Model Y. The program also includes a plug-in hybrid Chrysler Pacifica minivan, which is here tonight. We have taken advantage of this program to provide our members with the opportunity to experience this new technology firsthand. If you have not had a chance to experience an electric vehicle, watch for your opportunity as we will continue to bring these electric vehicles into our service territory periodically. 
Highline continues to demonstrate a commitment to the communities we serve through economic development programs. We've recently submitted an application under the USDA's Rural Economic Development Loan and Grant or Red Leg Program to support the Haxton Hospital District's addition of a clinic on Main Street in Haxton. We hope to get a status update on this application soon. As loan funds are paid back to Highline under the Red Lane program, they are used to establish a revolving loan fund. Highline's revolving loan fund, established through prior Red Lake projects, currently supports six loans outstanding or approved, totaling over $310,000, all supporting economic development, project, development projects in our service territory. February 2001 brought a blast from Mother Nature with the arrival of winter storm Uri. The storm brought record low temperatures to a large swath of middle America. While Highline's electrical system was not directly impacted, we did feel the impacts of the storm. The combination of record high electrical demand, coupled with generation stations of all types being knocked offline by the cold temperatures, resulted in rolling blackouts in the eastern interconnect. The electrical grid in the United States is made up of three isolated grids. While there are a few locations where power can be moved between the grids through the use of direct current ties, the ability to move power between the three grids is extremely limited. Highline is uniquely situated with part of our system in the western inter interconnect and part in the eastern interconnect. Our position straddling the two grids meant that Highline cr could provide assistance to the stressed eastern interconnect by switching load from the east to the west. This ability limited the need for, for, for Highline and other tri-state members in the Eastern Interconnect to have to experience the controlled rolling blackouts that were being utilized to keep the grid from experiencing massive outages. The downside was that some of Highline's members had to experience a series of momentary outages as the load was being switched from the east to the west. I'd like to take a few minutes to share my thoughts on the financial res results Jim just shared with you. We advanced an $8.9 million loan with the Rural Utility Service earlier this month. We did this in anticipation of a rising interest rate environment for the foreseeable future. The fixed rate for this 30-year advance is 2 and a quarter percent, and the weighted average interest rate for all of our long-term debt is 2.75 percent. This chart contains a lot of information. The first column shows the operating margin for each year prior to adjustments for deferred revenue. The next two columns show adjustments that were made utilizing deferred revenue. Specifically, we set excess revenue aside in 2013, 2015, and 2020, and supplemented revenue shortfalls in 2018 and 2019. The next column shows the operating margin for the year after the deferred revenue adjustment and the far right column shows the running balance in the deferred revenue account. As you look down the first column, you'll notice that Highline experiences large swings in operating margins, due largely to differences in irrigation sales. The $2.4 million that we have in our deferred revenue account today provides us with the ability to cushion future rate impacts that may come our way. When I think about possible rate impacts, I think about this slide that Jim just shared with you. As you can see, 70% of our expenses are wholesale power costs. What happens at Tri-State has a profound impact on our finances, and there's a lot going on at Tri-State. Tri-State reduced their rate by 2% in March of 2021, an additional 2% in March of 2022, due to settlement proceedings at the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. These rate reductions have helped to offset the need for rate increases at Highline. We have with us tonight Reg Rudolph. Reg served as the general manager of San Isabel Electric, a distribution cooperative headquartered in Pueblo West, prior to joining Tri-State in the last few month, months as a senior vice president and their chief energy innovations officer. At this time, I'd like to ask Reg to come up and provide us with an update on current happenings at Tri-State. Thank you, Dennis, and, and greetings to everybody at the Highline Annual Meeting. Thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you tonight. I, I do have one thing that is not germane to Tri-State that I'd like to bring up is that 
A couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to participate and watch a few games at the Class 2A girls basketball tournament in, in Loveland. And lo and behold, the Class 2A stu state champs girls are, are from Holyoke. That's fantastic. <laughs> also, uh, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for it, but Mr. Herman had a daughter that played on the, the, the team, and she was also named to the Allstate team. So congratulations to the Herman family. <laughs> I'll pay for that later, I'm sure, Dennis. But no, uh, greetings from, uh, from Tri-State G&T. Uh, no pressure being 70% of the income statement at, at Highline, and, and Dennis is right. What happens at Tri-State has a prof profound impact on, on the performance and what hap the rates at, at Highline. This year is, is Tri-State's 70th anniversary of, of being in business, and we're, we're proud to have Highline being an original member of our organization. Tri-State is a cooperative, just like Highline, and Highline's wholesale power supplier. And our mission is pretty consistent. It's very similar to what Highline has. We, our goal is to provide reliable, affordable, and responsible power to, to our members. Our members are spread across four states, hence the name Tri-State. Uh, we have members in Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, and, and New Mexico. So as you can imagine, we have a diverse set of opinions that, that drive our organizations, not only from the member CEOs, but also from the board of directors, which Leo serves so well on. Some of our core issues, or some of our core principles at, at Tri-State are reliability, and that's, that's the first and foremost of, of our goals, is, is to provide reliability to our 42 members. And to reach that endeavor, Tri-State has invested over $6 billion in generation and transmission assets to make sure that we can deliver that, that power. One of the things to note that Dennis brought up is uh, in the Storm Uri in, in February of 2021, Tri-State was able to manage all the resources and keep the power on, where in several parts of the United States there, there were rolling blackouts. And even in, in Colorado, uh, some, some companies, investor-owned utilities, recognized significant rate impacts because they weren't prepared. So we feel pretty proud of our ability to respond from a reliability perspective. On the affordability front is another, another one of our core principles. Providing safe, reliable power that's affordable for rural America is very important. As Dennis mentioned, uh, over the last two years, we've re reduced wholesale rates by 4%. And, and we have a stable rate forecast. There are a lot of things that, that are up in the air and challenges that we need to address as a power supplier going forward in the future. But I think we have a very good strategy as we, we go forward. One of the things that we see in the next couple of years that are, are going to help us with rate stability, it, 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 which is a regional transmission organization, that is gonna create a market for us on the west. On the east side, as Dennis mentioned, there's already a market. On the west side, that's going to help us, and that's where a predominant portion of uh, Highline's service territory resides. Another core principle is being responsible. Now, I don't need to come to rural America. I grew up in a small town in North Dakota. Being a steward of the resources is very important, and, that's, and that is a, a core principle in, in rural America as well. My position at Tri-State is the Chief Energy Innovations Officer, which is more impressive a title than, than the role that I have, is that I've spent 30 years at the distribution business working to drive energy transition and innovation. And we are going to work with my new role to work on beneficial electrification and energy efficiency, providing more products and services. How can people use electricity more efficiently and save money in the process? So in closing, Tri-State is going through a transformational change, but core to our business is reliability and affordability. As your cooperative power supplier, you own Tri-State, Leo rec uh, represents Highline on the board of directors, and you have a voice 
and what we do is we deliver our power supplier. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reg. Um, this is our commitment to our, to our membership, um, and it drives what we do as an organization every day. I would like to thank you for joining us this evening and would entertain any questions you may have. Well, my door is always open, so feel free to, to uh, come, come visit me anytime if you have questions that come up. Are there any questions online? No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I do want to add, uh, we will be advertising. There's a director vac vacancy due to a, a, a director retirement in District 3, which is Sedgwick and Dual Counties. Um, so that opening will be advertised in the near future. Uh, and the board will appoint um, one of the applicants for that position to serve the remainder of that term. So watch for that coming up. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Reg, for your explanation of Tri-State. The next item we have to come along in front of us is scholarships. We have several scholarships that we give and also Basin Rural Electric gives, and Tri-State partners with us on some also. The first one is a basic consumer scholarship, and Josephine Slochter from Holyoke High School receives a $1,000 scholarship. Her parents are Lucas and Shannon Slochter. If, if you'd hold your, hold your applause till we get done and then we can do it all at once. Thank you. The next one is a $1,000 Highline Scholarship that Ethan Kester gets. He goes to school at Sterling High School and his parents are Kevin and Pamela Kester. The next Highline Scholarship is another $1,000 scholarship and it is Brooklyn Plum who receives that scholarship. Her parents are Jeff and Kendra Plum, Haxton High School. The next Highline $1,000 scholarship is Tuff Sigler. He goes to school at Holyoke High School. Clinton and Stephanie Walter are his parents. The next scholarship, another $1,000 scholarship from Highline, is Annalise Roth. Christopher and Tamara Roth are her parents, and she goes to school at Caliche High School. Gabrielle Powell, Highline Scholarship, $1,000. Revere High School, and Mikhail, I'm sure it's Michael, and Sheila Powell are Gabrielle's parents. Another $1,000 scholarship goes to Andre Bauke, Highline Scholarship again. Mark and Anna Bauke from Yuma High School are Andre's parents. One more, two more Highline. Uh, Cade Killen from Holyoke, his parents are Troy and Kimber Killen, and he will receive a $1,000 scholarship. One more $1,000 from Highline is Eva Kramer, Rhett and Lori Kramer are her parents, and Kramer, she goes, she has a homeschool. Kellum Carnahan, Brad and Brenda Carnahan, $1,000 Highline Renewable Scholarship. The way the Highline Renewable Scholarship is, we set this up a few years ago. Uh, instead of just receiving one scholarship for $1,000, they can reapply for four years and help them all the way through college. And uh, Kellum is, uh, goes to Refair High School. Makia Adler from Ray High School. Brent and Patricia Adler are Makia's parents. And that is another $1,000 renewable scholarship. Zoe Vanderbark, Michael, and Carmen Vanderbark from Fleming receives a $500 Tri-State and Highline combined scholarship. Tegan Binder, Douglas and Christine Binder are Tegan's parents from Branson School Online receives a $500 Highline and Tri-State scholarship. Would you join me in welcoming these kids to the scholarship world of Highline? And Hopefully they have a wonderful life ahead of them. Next 
item of business? Um, un any unfinished business? Is there a unfinished business? Yo, oh, here we go. Turn the page over, knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any unfinished business? If there is no unfinished business, are there any comments that anyone would like to make? Anything you'd like to say? I thought the meal was wonderful. I don't know about you guys. We want to thank the, the preparers of that. It was wonderful. Um, we've, we have Taddeus. We have uh, some drawings, right? A registration drawing? There he is. Think. Gonna take her from here, old boy. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Greetings, everyone. Uh, I get the lucky job of giving away a bunch of cool stuff. So let's get this done and get you guys on your way. Uh, the first one tonight is the one that you all signed up for there on that little table when you walked in for the $100 bill credit. Um, I'm going to ask Delaney to come up here and help me with this one. <clears throat> this is Delaney, and she's going to help me draw a name out of this thing here. So let's go tumble, and we'll announce a winner here. All right, I'm going to spell the last name. It's, we, it's a bill. Starts with a C O C U V E T. That's what I can read. Do we have a bill C? Do we have multiple bill C's? Going once. You <laughs> could All right, we'll call it, we'll do another one. I'm having a hard time reading tonight. Is there an Elaine here? Last name might start with an N. How would you pronounce your name? That's it. Yep. There's our $100 winner. We'll, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Thanks, Elaine. All right, these, uh, these next gifts are going to be hand-delivered by your board of directors. The first six ones we're going to draw here are from Novus Glass. You get some glass cleaner, but attached to that glass cleaner, you get a $50 gift card from our friends at Bank of Colorado. Our first winner, Helen Miller. Helen Miller, stand up. Our second two-pack of glass cleaner and $50 gift card goes to Kip Struckmeyer. Kip. Number three of six goes to Raymond and Nancy Burgess. I think they're right over here. Right, right straight in front of me. Oh, yeah, Delaney. Sorry, huh? Number four of six goes to George Parks. George. Right here. That's an easy one. 
I think row number five of six goes to Steve and Kimberly Young. And the last glass cleaner and fifty dollar goes to Mary Days. Back next to center back. Okay. All right, so gift, uh, this next gift is from uh, Logo Store and Electrotech. We've got a reversible umbrella and a $50 Amazon gift card. Bruce Kokash? And we have another one of these, again, from Logo Store and Electrotech. Goes to Robert Martin Limited. All right, next we've got a wireless power bank, a wireless or a you know, portable battery, and a $50 gift card from Western United. That goes to Stanley Cross. All right, next up we've got a stainless steel tumbler, a mini Bluetooth speaker, and another $50 gift card. This comes to us from Specialty Incentives and ASC. Gerritsen, Inc. That was easy. We got another mini Bluetooth speaker, a Swiss Army knife, and a $50 gift card. These come from Specialty Incentives, GF Beaver, and ASC. And this goes to Rodney Borner. Rod Borner. Keep your hand up there, Rod. Do you see him? Do you see him? Rod? Burner? Okay, we got another mini Bluetooth speaker, a Swiss Army knife, and $50 gift card. This is for Lucas Schlachter. Here we've got a lantern light and another Bluetooth speaker and $50 from Special Incentives and Western United. James Austin. All right, we got a 10 pack of grease from CHS. Thank you, Evan. And a $50 and 50 bucks from Exponential Engineering. Wilbur Davis. We got Wilbur. Another 10 pack of grease goes to Viola Cortez. Viola? All right, next up we've got a Black and Decker Dustbuster and a $50 gift card from Pole Position and ASC. Stacy Fulcher, right here. Next up, we've got an Echo Dot and a $50 card, gift card from PC Telecom and ESC Engineering. Kenny Tomkey, straight back. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> we gotta get ourselves a gift basket here and a gift card from Bank of Colorado. Harold Blum. Harold? Ooh, we got a smart thermostat and 50 bucks from PCS and Addison Construction. Keith Onken, over here, on the far east side over here. And we've got $150 to Keith Onken. Keith? Oh, I'm sorry, Melvin Bittner. Melvin Bittner. And another 150 from Addison Construction goes to 
Manuel Hernandez. Right here. Are we on the $150 Amazon gift card? Oh, so where are we at? So what do we do? Okay. Okay. So this next name is going to get a $150 gift card. Donald Larson. Is there a Donald Larson in the house? There he is. So now we're at the wooden stool, is that right? So Jason, we're giving away the, the wooden step stool. This is handcrafted by one of our directors who didn't make it here tonight, Merle, Merle Miller. Um, heirloom quality stuff, I would never step foot on this thing, it's way too nice. Uh, this goes to Marvin Breckel, Marvin Breckel. Straight back, Steve. Okay, so for these next two, we're not gonna we're not gonna deliver these ones. We're gonna have these next two winners come up, and we're gonna get some pictures. These are kind of our grand prizes. <clears throat> so this next one is uh, one of the chainsaws that you saw over here, where Sandra was showing off an 18-inch bar, really really slick little system, uh, electric from Ego Power from Tri-State donated this, and that win winner on this chainsaw is Harry Hernandez Jr. Come on up, Harry. We'll get a picture with you. <clears throat> and the last prize to give away is a 65-inch 4K smart TV from Ward Electric. And that'll be to Jay Kruger. Come up here and join us. Jay Kruger. Yeah. We sure can. Yeah. All right. Now the one you've all been waiting for, $2,500. This is taken from the entire membership. So hopefully that person's here tonight. It's been a while since we've given this one away. $2,500 goes to is there a Justin Briggs? Justin Briggs. Going once. No Justin Briggs. Well, we tried. We tried. All right, well, I'll, I'll hand it back over to Mike Bennett, who can wrap us up and adjourn. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much, Ted. Unless we have any other something ahead of us, I adjourn the meeting. And thank you very much for coming. Uh, maybe Robbie or we'll try to get a picture of uh, Jadine with the TV somehow. Thank you.